Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education <coughs> open agenda meeting May 9th, 2019. Previously, we just met in executive session to discuss personnel agenda, the HIB report, suspension and detention report, and legal status report. At this time, Mrs. Saradaki, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Bauer? Here. Mrs. Boroff? Mrs. Brody? Here. Dr. Clancy? Here. Mrs. Suriani? Here. Mrs. Williams? Here. Uh, Mrs. Winkler? Here. Mr. Murray? Here. Dr. Kulikowski? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you, Ms. Saradaki. Will you please join me in the salute to the flag? <clears throat> Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure that the right of the public have advanced notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Scotch Plains Fanwood Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Board of Education offices located at 512 Cedar Street, Scotch Plains. New Jersey. Such notice was also provided in written notice and forwarded to the Times, the Township Clerk of Scotch Plains, the Borough Clerk of Fanwood, and in the annual notice of regularly scheduled meetings as adopted March 29, 2018. At this time, we have additions to the agenda added since May 3rd. 3S, extended <laughs> school year placements for summer 2019. 4S, field trips. 17 BUS, vendor for the 2018-19 high school spring play. 18 BUS, boiler installation at Park Middle School. 19 BUS, culinary arts classroom renovation. 20 BUS, heating and cooling units for the multi-purpose rooms. 21 BUS, McKinney Ventro Educational of Homeless Children and Youth Program and 22 BUS Incentive Award from Rutgers. At this time, we'll have our instructional updates. Dr. Hayes. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce Liz Nodell Gordon, who is our Substance Awareness um, Counselor at the high school. And I'm going to bring her up and have her introduce her students. Uh, the board uh, supported uh, our students attending a program some months ago mm -hmm. and at that point expressed an interest in hearing an update. So, so good, good evening everybody. Mm -hmm. um, as you heard, I'm Liz Nodell Gordon, the District Student Assistance Coordinator, Substance Awareness Counselor. And I'd like to introduce Rosie. I'd like to introduce Marissa, Allie, and Liz. Okay. We're going to help them they're going to speak. Sure. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Rosie. Um, so I'm gonna be telling you guys about Imagine, and it is basically a center for loss, so like basically loss treatment, and it's located in Mountainside, so really close to here. Um, it supports, it's a grief support center for children, young adults, and anybody who has ever dealt with the loss in their life. Um, no loss is too small as we like to say in like our tiny meetings. Um, they provide free grief support care and um, it's year round for as long as you need it. Um, and they actually do outreach programs with us, so it's Scotch Plains Family with High School. Um, and since I'm a senior, it's my last year doing this with them. So like I'm kind of like at a loss for words for how much it's helped me and I'll tell you guys about that later. But their goal is to basically create a, a place where grief and loss is somewhere that can be expressed and isn't something to be ashamed of. So I'm gonna pass it to Marissa. Hi, I'm Marissa. Good evening, everyone. Um, here in the companion program where us students, we talk to everybody and other people who go through other problems similar, we have, two, we have four goals that we like to express that one of, the, one of them is that we want to recognize that there are so many different types of losses that everybody goes through, especially young people these days. It's just not focused enough that we believe. 
that there could be death, illness, divorce, uh, sports injury, other injuries, um, losing a pet that um, just affects you emotionally or physically that is so important and needs to be stressed. We need to be able to norm normalize grief, the fact that we tend to apologize constantly for our emotions and our negative emotions that we um, express on a daily basis. We, that needs to be normal. It's not something that is abnormal or something we're not used to. And we need to know that expressing our feelings of grief, um, it helps develop resilience and learn that uh, students are at higher risk of different, of more types of losses because of how we're so young, we don't know how to deal with or express ourselves most of the time. We don't have much experience or knowledge in our lives to help us deal and cope with it. And uh, lastly, we want to learn that we need to be here for each other. We want to be able to know that and help other people know that they're not alone when it comes to these problems, that we want to show them that it's okay to be this way, it's okay to express these types of feelings and that no one is alone. And pass it to Allie. Um, hi again, I'm Rosie. Um, as I said before, I am a senior at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School. Um, and I've been in this program for three years. Uh, I was introduced to it by Ms. Nodell Gordon. Um, I don't know how she found out about my situation, but she did. And I'm actually glad that she did because it put me through this program. And I've met these wonderful ladies right here who have become my close friends for the past three years of my high school experience. So a little bit about myself. I did not grow up in Scotch Plains. I grew up in Plainfield. And I kind of moved around a lot when I was younger because I was adopted at such a young age, which I kind of find that as a loss and a gain in my life. And at the age of 12 years old, well, right before I turned 12, I lost my adoptive mother to a heart attack and it really took a toll on me. And I didn't really have time to grieve. I really was like rushed into everything in my life. So like everything I did from the way I moved to the way I said things to the way I even acted was just kind of like a front that I put up. We kind of call those our masks. So I put up like a happy mask and I've been doing that for a while and it kind of got tired at a certain point to the point where I kind of started breaking off and breaking away from people at one point. And they kind of realized and said, like, are you gonna come back to us? Like, what's wrong? So I had to learn through the Imagine program that I'm, it's okay to feel the way I feel. And even though I didn't have time to do it then, to grieve then, I do have now. It's nothing like I can't grieve at any point in time. And that's what they've taught me. They've taught me that I always have a safe space at Scotch Plains Family to always just be myself and we are actually at the end of this month we are going to be presenting in front of my classmates which is really heart racing for me because they've never heard me say anything like this and now they're going to hear a completely different side of me and I just can't wait to express that to them so the Imagine program is really important for me especially because it helped me grow and realize my grief isn't something that can just go away thank you thank you Hi, so my name's Allie, and so when I was in fourth grade, my mom was diagnosed with colon cancer, and when I was in sixth grade, my mom passed away from cancer. My mom was always, like, when I'm home with my sister, and my sister and I were always best friends, and my dad would work long hours and come home at, like, six o'clock, and then my sister and I were very close, and when my mom passed away, my dad would work to 7.30, and my sister would be locked in her room all day. When my mom passed away, a year later, my dad sent me to Imagine for the classes with other kids, which really helped me a lot. And then when I got into high school, I started doing the Imagine program and doing speeches. And that helped me a lot because now I'm able to talk about it without crying. And now people know how to like, how sometimes I react about little things. Like sometimes like I say in my speech, I like dropping my phone. Sometimes I'll have such a bad day that it'll make me cry. And other times like little things make me so happy because like, I'm going to be going to prom, which is like a big thing to do without my mom being there. Um, Imagine helped me a lot being able to talk to my friends and to help other people. And now when people, like I know one of my friends also happened to lost her parents and we communicate a lot about it and help each other. And I've learned so much through this program about how to help people. 
Hi, um, I'm Liz. So I'm a sophomore at SPF, and I didn't know about Imagine before um, like the program came to my class. And then I decided to like I wanted to speak because I was like, oh, you know, like what's the worst that could happen? I could always just you know just like stand there and not speak. But um, it was like I actually did end up speaking like a lot of the classes. And it was like a really good exercise in public speaking for me, and also just um, like sharing my story. It's like kind of therapeutic in a way because, um, like, in a way, I kind of know like a I'll never see them again, even though we're all at SPF, or b like it's just better to like say it and like talk about it because it's just like oh yeah, you know, it's behind me like. I got over it and so what had happened to me was my mom she was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was two so it was just always kind of like normal and stuff and uh, she put it into remission twice but then I ultimately lost her in um, when I was in the sixth grade and then I couldn't really talk to anybody any anybody about it even though like my sister and my dad were going through the same thing because my dad would always be like oh you know just like crying's only for like weddings and funerals so like when I was like still sad like after the fact I didn't really you know want to like appear weak in that aspect so I kind of just bottled down all my feelings and then eventually like turned to like self-destructive behavior but eventually like just talking about it like with my friends um like I got over it so if like I had like had imagined like at a younger age I guess or just like been able to like find somebody sooner um just like talk to and that's like what a big thing like imagine stress is like just find somebody safe to talk to and be just um like be there for each other and know how to like respond in like an effective manner because like when we hear like somebody has a loss be like oh I'm so sorry for your loss but um when you hear that over and over again as someone who's experienced grief it just kind of becomes like it doesn't really mean anything anymore and we need to learn how to communicate better and that's what Imagine does. Wow. Hi again. So again I'm Marissa. Um, I've been a part of the Imagine program since I was in my freshman year. I'm a junior now, so this is my third year doing it. Uh, I remember my first year, I was very, very shy. I didn't say a single thing to anybody. I didn't even know I was there. I didn't know how I got there in the first place. And over time, I eventually was broken out of my shell. I got a lot more comfortable with everybody around me, and I made a lot of new friends. And growing up through my struggles, I was a very reserved person. I thought that it was no one else's business and that no one else deserved or needed to know what I was going through. I never heard about anybody else going through struggles, so I thought, why do I have to say anything? I've dealt with a lot when it came to my family. Um, I moved around a lot. I had a lot of experiences, um, and I currently... Um, I learned, I'm still going through a lot of stuff, and the Imagine program has definitely taught me that I need to express myself a lot more. Everyone around me always told me that I needed to speak my mind a lot more, I needed to express myself, and I didn't want to, I didn't think I needed to. And it really got me down, it affected a lot of the things around me, it affected my friends, my school, and being a student, being so young, you didn't know that this is something that could happen or that should be happening. You think that your problems shouldn't affect your outside life. And this Imagine program really taught me that it's okay to experience these types of things, to have things around you affect your uh, everyday life and that there are gonna be so many negative things around you that are gonna put you down. But there are gonna be people around you going through the same exact thing that can help you and want to help you and want you to talk about it. And that was one of the most important things I've learned from this program. So I just want to run through real quickly. Um, first of all, these guys are great. These are our, some of our mentors. There's a few more in the program. And um, I'm really proud of them mm -hmm. for lots of reasons, not just because they came and spoke to you guys tonight. but really. So, so how it works is they go for a half-day training. At, we take them to Imagine so they can see the grief center and go through it. And then um, one of the uh, counselors from Imagine, um, so far it's been Connie Palmer, she'll be coming with another um, counselor this year. And they come and they do a small presentation about what grief looks like and the different stages of grief and, um, and resiliency in, 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 in any individual, not just young people. 
And um, then the mentors, then they get up and they speak. And then we do an evaluation and we ask um, the freshman class, we do it for our freshman and senior, all of our freshman and senior health classes. Then we ask the freshman if they'd like to be a mentor, and that's how Liz came on board with us because uh, she saw the presentation and Marissa too. No, we, we, and Marissa too. Um, and so um, they, then we ask them if they want to come, and then they come, if they want to, they can volunteer to come through the training. Um, they never have to speak in front of a class, but we do is we ask them to come and at least observe at least once. And usually when they observe, then they'd say, oh, I can speak. And it's hard. It's really hard because they're getting up in front of their peers. And Rosie, my Rosie is leaving. I'm very sad. If I could fail her, I would, but um, <laughs> so she could stay one more year. But, um, but you know, um, she's, she's excited to present to her own specific health class, which I think is, like, amazing, you know, that, that she's willing to tell this story. And as the girls express to you that, that there's, different sta- there's different types of loss. It's not just through death. It's not just through, through that. It's, it's, there's lots of different uh, losses. And then there's a, compile, a, a combination and compiling of, of losses that some of these young girls are losing. Before I finish, I just want to tell you that um, one of the things that I'm really strict about, because they do tend to miss a lot of class time when they do the presentations, is that they have to be in good academic standing. So all these girls right now, don't make me a liar, are either honor roll or close to high honor roll students right now. That was not always the case for some of them. That is what I do lord over them, that if they want to come out of class and speak, they have to be in good standing academically, and their teachers have to give them permission. So we'd like to take any questions, and then... We'll move on. If you have any, and you guys feel free to answer the questions. I don't to speak. I don't have any questions, but I am very proud of all of you for coming out and sharing, and I thank you for taking the time of, of giving your personal stories. I appreciated hearing them, and I'm very proud of you doing this to your class and your classmates and the fact that you're mentoring others. And, Liz, thank you so much for sharing this with us. Anybody else? I just wanted to add that the power of um, being able to share with others you may not know the impact that you have on some of your friends or, you know, peers, that you're just being there or someone being available to listen can really make a difference. So the power, it's just very powerful for, for other, other people that you may never know, but just know that that's true. So thank you so much. Um, I want to say I want to thank you for showing your vulnerabilities here. It was very brave, and hopefully other people will um, take with that that they don't have to be afraid to be vulnerable as well. And imagine, I remember when it opened um, in Westfield inside the church. Um, So I'm so glad to see that they've, like, grown in because it's a very undervalued need that um, people don't really want to talk about. So and it's very if special. You've seen their new center, it's amazing. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's amazing. It I is. Used to go to the one in Westfield, one uh-huh. with my dad, and now the one in Mountain Yeah. They have teen rooms. They have like different types. Oh, really? I should you, drop by sometime because I remember when yeah, I helped them the move in. Yeah. I helped them move some stuff in there. Yeah. You wouldn't. You wouldn't believe like what it looked like. Uh-huh. It's just great. I want to thank you for coming as well. Um, I think I echo what what everyone else has has said. I think um, for you to be able to share some of the most difficult experiences of your lives with people that you don't know, it's it's very difficult, and um, I think we all understand that. So thank you for sharing, and um, you're all just such remarkable leaders. Um, you've become peer leaders, and um, seems like very effective leaders and. I echo what someone else said in that I bet when you're making these presentations, you're really having an impact on your peers, that there are other people who have been through similar experiences that that you are um, influencing to get to get the needed help. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Soriani. Ms. Bauer. I was just going to say the the vulnerability that people were talking about is also your strength. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I think um, one of the things that it, it took me a long time to learn, but that you've already learned, is that there are ups and downs and challenges all through life. It's not a straight path uh, for any of us. And so the fact that you're helping your peers uh, as well as yourselves, I think it's a tribute to each one of you. So thank you for what you're doing.
And too often we only hear about the things that happen in schools that are not good. And it is such a joy to hear you come tonight and share the good that you're spreading and the, and the caring that you're extending to others. So we're very proud of what you're doing um, and by extension how you're impacting the positiveness of your high school. Because uh, high school can be a difficult time for everyone to navigate, so everyone needs some help. And uh, you're great ambassadors in terms of having people that can turn to you to get the support that they need as well. So thank you for sharing all that you're doing to make our high school a better place. Thank you for your presentation. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. And it's wonderful, the board, to have a chance to see. You know, we approve so many things, and sometimes we don't get to see the impact of them. So this is a wonderful, wonderful thing for us to be able to appreciate. Yes, photo op. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, I only have the film. Come over here, Rosie and mm -hmm. Liz. <laughs> 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 That's good. <laughs> Thank you. Again. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for bringing your students, Liz. Okay, um, Dr. Hayes, Comprehensive Equity Plan for 2019-2022. Thank you. Um, I want to thank uh, the members of the committee that met with me. Um, Tanya Williams from the board was part of the committee, um, and we had central office principals, uh, Candace Testa, um, a variety of people who represent all aspects of our school district. We met and we reviewed a very lengthy document from the State Department in which we assess ourselves as a district in four areas. Uh, board responsibilities relative to equity, um, staff development and training, classroom and school practices, which are in two areas. One is in equality and equity in curriculum. The second is in equality and equity in student access. And the last area is in employment and contract practices. So the good news is that as a district, we found that we were in compliance with the vast majority of indicators um, that we need to reflect on. We did find several areas that we would like to continue to improve in, and so we did assess ourselves as not in compliance. One is in the area of access to gifted and talented programs, as well as advanced classes, particularly in math and science. Um, we have to identify the schools that are not in compliance, and for that one, we indicated all of our schools because we would like to increase minority representation in our Quest program, advanced and accelerated classes, as well as female participation in and minority participation in advanced classes, such as AP classes. Uh, and we have a plan that I'll speak to that will address that. Secondly, the board, this is not a surprise because you hear statistics every board meeting in exec on uh, suspensions. We do find that there is disproportionality at the high school in terms of minorities being overrepresented in suspensions compared to their base number of students at the high school. And so we will be looking to reduce those. And then finally, um, we look at access to um, our facilities. And we did note that at Coles, um, we want to improve access for students with disabilities. Uh, we can't, at this point, make every one of our schools um, barrier-free access. But we do focus on those schools where it's a priority because we have students currently who need the, that support. And so we will be um, addressing that it, it, at Coles. Primarily everything has access except the playground. And we've got a plan in place. So in addition to the equity self-assessment, the board has a copy of a corrective action plan where we've outlined some of the ways in which we're going to 
address these issues. And the corrective action plan, we did also add actions for some of the areas where we are in compliance, because those are areas that you have to continue to stay in compliance. So under board responsibilities, the board will continue to look at its policies relative to equity. They will continue to authorize an affirmative action officer uh, for all areas that are needed. You'll continue to look along with the administration at disaggregated data with respect to student performance and um, the number of staff members who apply for positions and will continue to adopt the comprehensive equity plan and implement it. Specifically under the area of um, staff development, we have a list of trainings that are ongoing and we will continue to be in compliance by ensuring that our staff has access to training on all aspects of diversity, conflict resolution, um, and ways in which to ensure that we do not discriminate, nor, uh, and also activities to prevent bullying. Uh, and then finally, in terms of the areas where we identified specific needs, we will be looking at baseline data, um, and from that data review, we will identify um, steps that we can take to improve access to gifted and talented classes and AP classes. Part of that will be done through differentiated instruction and then a reanalysis of the data to see what impact changes in uh, staff uh, teaching methods have. In terms of the Code of Student Conduct, we did this year take the Code of Conduct and set it outside of the specific board policy so that it could be updated more frequently. And we'll be looking at that Code of Conduct to determine if there are any areas that need adjusting. Um, it will inform needs for more culturally responsive teaching as well as disciplinary practices that focus on restorative and remediation practices. In that regard, we'll implement the staff development and then we will again reanalyze the data to see whether or not the changes that we're trying to elicit are having the appropriate impact. Um, and then we will continue to look at the data related to those efforts. And last but not least, um, the sidewalk installation and the Coles playground should take place uh, the early, actually the summer going into next year so that it's ready to go for the fall. Uh, so that's only a one-year corrective action plan because we hope to have it ready for September. And then the last area in terms of employment practices, we are always mindful of trying to create a more diverse workforce and more diverse teaching staff. And in that regard, we will continue our outreach efforts to recruit um, uh, teaching and aid staff from all um, aspects of different representative categories that serve our, our district. We do keep track of data from recruitment to try to find out which areas and which, um, for example, Peter goes to um, recruitment uh, and teacher affairs where they, um, new teachers that are trying to break into the, our profession um, we recruit and we look at those recruitments relative to schools that have diverse populations because that will give us potentially um, a, a more diverse pool of applicants to choose from. We advertise in a wide variety of places to try to encourage that recruitment and we will continue those efforts as well. So although we did not find ourselves not compliant in that area because our recruitment efforts are ongoing and appropriate, we know that there's still room to grow. So we keep that in the plan as we move forward. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. Um, and then uh, on May 30th, uh, if there are no suggested changes, we will adopt the Comprehensive Equity Plan, Needs Assessment, and Corrective Action Plan, and then they will be submitted to the State Department for their approval. Any questions? Thank you very much. It was um, my thanks to, again, it, it was a, an undertaking that, that you can see the level of detail. Yes. Very comprehensive. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.
Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hayes. That concludes the instructional updates. I appreciate that. On May 30th at the regular public meeting, we'll be recognizing the PTA presidents and PTA council president for their service to our schools and our district. At this time, in accordance with Scotch Plains Fanwood Public Schools Bylaw 0164-0165, the meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comments, maximum two minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing the superintendent items, business functions, and other board business will be heard first. If time remain, remains, speakers may address other matters. As you approach the podium, please state your name and the town in which you reside. My name is Ethan Murray, and I am from Scotch Plains. I um, I've written a letter to uh, Dr. Hayes for Teacher Appreciation Week, and I'm going to share it with you. Dear Dr. Hayes, I am writing to express how much I appreciate all the wonderful things you do for this district. You are not just an amazing person, but you are very compassionate towards all of your staff and students. You encourage me to come to Terrell Middle School each and every day of the week. Sometimes I want to come to school on the weekend because that's just how amazing this place is and it's all because of what you do. You work really hard and I see this all the time when I come to the board meetings. Also, when you can, you come to all the students' performances and that shows just how dedicated you are to this town. I saw you at the leadership conference at the jazz festival and I'm sure you were at many more. It's always a pleasure to see you and say hi when I can. It's going to be so sad to see you leave and everyone will miss you. I'm sure Dr. Mass We'll do our best for us, but we all miss you very much. So I really, all I really wanted to say was thanks. Thanks for being there for all of us and being our friend. We're going to miss you a lot, but you will always be in our memories. Thank you so much. You have to give her a copy. <laughs> that was so sweet. It was actually sent, I think it was sent. Yeah, I sent one to you, and now so. Thank, thank you. <laughs> I, nice. I, you, you've touched my heart. Thank you. I, it, I, there, I have no words. <laughs> yes, thank you, Ethan. I know. It made me cry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Years for teacher appreciation. No one has ever come and done something like that before. So thank you for taking the time and your thoughtfulness for doing so, especially for Dr. Hayes. Thank you. <laughs> thank your, you. Your shirt is right. Fearless. <laughs> yes. Very nice. Um, if there's no one else, then we'll move to the next portion. You can't follow that. No. So. <laughs> you know, you're in. We gotta close this. Got to move on. <laughs> portion then. We should just end on the that one note. and only uh, committee out. reports. Who would like to read their committee go. reports? I'll follow that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shot. So, so I have a facilities committee meeting. It's definitely not as interesting, but. <laughs> um, but here goes it. So uh, a couple things. We, we met on Monday. <clears throat> we actually met with uh, Potter Architects regarding Park Middle School masonry restoration. So there's some um, work that's being looked at right now. And I, the, the name, I'm forgetting what are they're called, above the windows. Oh, the lentil? The lentil. Yes. So lentils above the windows on the second floor of Terrell. So the, some of them are crack, cracked and chipping, and so there's a project underway to evaluate, looking at those, what that'll take to restore that um, and fix any of the masonry work around that. So it's it would be a two-phase project. So right now there's the analysis going on so that we can get a fair estimate and understanding of what that work will really entail. So more to come on that. Um, we had a conversation around the transportation contract um, and you know the contract for renewal for 1920 so the committee discussed uh, we're going to have to rebid the transportation contract which may increase our transportation costs so the request is that we would um, be able to add an additional bus and a new bus driver um, to our current staff and fleet that'll help us with other things other than just, you know, it'll help with the district routes, but more flexibility with field trips, athletics, and things like that. So that would come out of excess extraordinary aid. Um, you know, we continue to evaluate our sta our fleet of, of buses as well as, as, you know, we've been replacing them over, over the course of the years, staggering them a bit because they have an end of life um, to them. So we have a couple more buses that we need to do over the next couple of years. So that's that's up and coming. On the Park Middle School side, again, um, there's two boilers in the front room. One is cracked and needs to be replaced, and the other one of similar age is 
similarly worn and beginning or about to be cracking. So the recommendation is to replace both at a cost of approximately two hundred thirty-six thousand nine hundred and thirty-five dollars out of the ed, from the dated services contract coming out of excess extraordinary aid. Um, Evangel Church has requested the use of our school auditorium, so that's in discussions. And um, Debbie is working, you know, on logistics and details for, to provide us with further information on uh, availability and, and you know how to proceed. Uh, the high school foods classroom is very old, so the thought is that there's a redesign need there. So um, the thought is to engage EI associates who we worked with before to provide uh, conceptual options, schematic designs, and you know, an NJDOE submission. Um, so the initial phase would be just let's figure out what we want to do with it, and then that would be a summer 2020 project. Um, HVAC summer project, so there was three um, HVAC summer projects totaling 272946 That would be the Brunner, Evergreen, and Coles multipurpose rooms. Um, so that'll that'll help um, with our facilities planning to get those taken care of. And then there's um, discussion around the approval for a long-range facility plan, which we should have for our June meeting. So discussed a lot of things. Um, I think Cindy will have some similar things in the Finance Committee, so. But any questions anybody has? I do. Sure. Um, with the foods room that's being laid out by the architect, is some of the faculty that will be actually teaching in that room be part of the setup discussion? The meeting that we had did include um, the supervisor and the teacher involved in the class. Great. Right. As well as um, our director of buildings and grounds. And the four of us went and visited uh, another site that... Um, as a kitchen that a culinary arts uh, so this way the that person that's teaching the course will actually ha have something to do with the layout of the room yes she was involved in the visit and excellent in the conversation we had with the architects thank you and thank you mr. Murray so I had a, a somewhat related question but it's just occurring to me and I'm wondering about um, any conversations related to interdisciplinary kinds of things when you're thinking it uh, pops into my mind about the food channel maybe the the communications tv production people want to do something and have integrate with that or i don't know about interdisciplinary connections but i i had to emailed and ask um mr murray about curriculum connections in general to facilities and our long-range planning and so I think you know whatever kinds of creative brainstorming ideas from the students as well as from the staff would be great when you're working on the plan there there was already some interdisciplinary because um, the CAD students actually drew up plans potential plans for the food classroom um, they didn't know all the code requirements so none of their plants were able to be used as is but the architect did take them in case they were able to use any of the ideas from them that's great that's really great yeah but I agree with Nancy about having the mirrors ahead so it can be uh, you know if an audience is watching they can see what's going on on the table from above not just looking across at it you can see how things are prepared one of the things we saw in the classroom were once cameras that come down over the mm -hmm. yes and with screens so the students can see exactly what's going on on the table and this is Sarah Dackey's also working with the um, our food provider Pomptonian and is going to reach out to find out whether or not if they use that facility for training um, if some of the costs can be offset so, and are there any possibilities or any, I don't know about donations, but I, um, I'm also thinking about um, like the, I don't know if Pomptonian even do, does some of this, but like the, the grow your own, the aero farms kinds of things, hydroponic uh, growing, you know, where you have the crops every 
18 days or whatever. I, th I think it's going to be challenging just to fit the equipment into that room for the... Into the space. <laughs> into the space, yeah. But, but that's where there could be an interdisciplinary connection with the um, environmental science class. Yes, uh, because, because there is the greenhouse. There, there is the greenhouse, right. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Or maybe with the wild language classes with some ethnic foods and things like that. That really sounds awesome. I mean, we already see some of that happening in the elementary schools with the garden initiatives mm -hmm. that they've mm -hmm. done, where some of their foods are, the foods they raise are incorporated into the menu at the school. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Next I can report. Dr. I guess I can, I can go on to uh, finance. Um, as Mr. Murray said, we reviewed many of these same items, and the, the committee supported Mrs. Saradaki's recommendations as follows, the, um, to add to in the rebid for the, the transportation contract, we, we, we support the adding one, one bus driver and one bus to our current fleet. Um, we also, did we get the final sales on selling our, our two old buses today? Or will that Stern. be in? Yes. Oh, they, they are on the agenda. So we, um, uh, these items, um, it will be on on tonight's agenda, the, the uh, final sale of uh, on two of our old buses and some lawn equipment, so that's good. So uh, someone has bought them, so that's wonderful. So, um, and then um, also we we uh, supported her recommendation for two new two new boilers at Park Middle, and then the new HV units at in the broader multi-purpose room, Evergreen multi-purpose room, Cole's multi-purpose room, um, for a total of 272,946. And we also talked about the need for the foods classroom to be updated totally, and we we uh, support that. And there are, there are also, um, uh, uh, bids to be awarded um, this meeting or the next meeting for the food service management company, athletic reconditioning, electrical supplies for building maintenance, custodial supplies for building maintenance, and the park masonry restoration. And uh, so there's a lot going on. Thank you, Dr. Clancy. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Clancy? Thank you. Any other committee reports? I have a curriculum committee okay, report. Okay. The curriculum committee also met on Monday, May 6th. Um, we had an in-depth presentation by Erin Mullman on the language arts cyclical review. She described how a committee comprised of special and general education teachers conduct is currently conducting a cyclical review of the district's reading and writing programs as part of a regular systemic curriculum evaluation. The last review took place in 2010, um, and our current program is actually going out of print, so um, we need to replace the, the reading and writing materials. Um, in addition to, to, to why that's needed, um, we also do the cyclical review to continue to make sure we're continuing to meet the needs of all of our learners, to respond to the influences of changing technology, um, to reflect current research and informed practice, and to make sure that the program, our reading and writing program, is aligned with current standards. Um, so Ms. Mullman explained that the review began in spring 2018 based on feedback from the Tri-State con Consortium as part of their writing visit when they came last spring to uh, look at our writing workshop program. The committee then continued to survey key stakeholders, research practices in other districts, and narrow down possible reading and writing programs. The committee then attended site visits where possible programs were being used, um, including Mountainside and Saraville School Districts. 
Feedback from teachers stated they wanted engaging mentor texts, a program with transferable skills, and feedback from students and other districts highlighted the workshop model of learning. So after considering two programs, the Fountas and Pinnell Literacy Classroom and the Teachers College Reading and Writing Project, and seeing each in use in other districts, the committee selected the Teachers College Reading and Writing Project. The decision was made based on the workshop approach to learning, the focus on transferable skills, the focus on student engagement through independent reading and choice, the emphasis on authentic mentor texts for teachers, the ability to differentiate for individuals and groups of students, and predictable structure for both the reading and writing programs. So the reading program involves shared reading, where the teachers model for students metacognitive work convey reading strategies through many lessons, and the majority of the work is accomplished through independent reading, guided reading, and strategy groups. The writing aspect of the program involves genre-focused instruction, mini lessons, and independent work time where students practice the skills they've been taught. In both the reading and writing, opportunities are built in for teachers to help students through small group instruction. So in terms of implementation um, of, the, of this new program, the writing program will be rolled out first because it m more closely resembles the current writing workshop program. Um, in 2019-20, K-5 classrooms will roll out the writing program, and some members of the cyclical review committee will roll out the reading program in their classrooms. Full implementation will be in 2020-2021. Um, Ms. Mullman also told us that more information will be presented to the curriculum committee in, in June, and the board will be asked to approve the new reading and writing program materials in June. An approximate cost per classroom is $2,291, compared to the current cost of $1,900 per classroom for the Good Habits Great Readers, which is the program we have in place right now. The new program, however, does include a classroom library, um, to support the learning, which the current program does not. The total cost will be approximately $343,000 district-wide, uh, which is comparable to the FOSS implementation cost for, for that science program that was un, um, rolled out several years ago. Uh, Ms. Mullman also discussed that phonics and word study changes are anticipated in 2021-2022 for K-5. through Upon making these changes, parent information panels will be held about the changes and how parents can continue to support their students at home. Okay. Okay, so after that, Dr. Mast provided um, the curriculum committee with the curriculum matrix for 2019-20, which is the listing of all the district's courses and the last date of board approval. Many of the course proficiencies were recently updated, reviewed, and voted on by the board um, as part of the CUSAC process and um, had been reviewed with the full board by the curriculum committee over the last few months. Um, an additional item that, that Ms. Mullman mentioned actually was the, and it wasn't on our um, agenda, but was mentioned was the potential movement of report cards from quarterly to a trimester schedule, um, which will give students additional time to meet performance standards and teachers additional time to assess student performance <coughs> of the standards, which are very detailed and robust on the report cards. Um, teachers have provided feedback at their staff meeting that this would be a beneficial change, and the committee is just beginning um, to meet to review feedback and consider how they can move forward with this change. Um, report card rubrics will have to be re revised um, based on the changes to the reading and writing program that I described, so it, um, it seems like it might be fitting to make that, that change as well moving forward. And that's it. Thank you, Ms. Doriani. Any questions? I just had one. Dr. Dr. Lindsay it down. Um, on the report cards, if, you, if there's a thought to move from a quarterly to to trimester, that would be for the high school as well? No. no. It's only for the elementary school. Oh, okay. All Thank right. you for clarifying. Okay, because I was going to ask that would, for seniors choosing to go on to college, they want them to be. Yeah. Okay. No, only elementary. All right. That's okay. okay. Very helpful. Good question. Good question. And, yes. and <laughs> I read that. No, I just finished that process. Um, and the other, um, the other thought I had was I liked how that we yeah, that we encouraged, or I guess that would be you know, Dr. Mast, have you know teachers actually go and try out these new programs or see what they're like in other schools mm -hmm. and really get get mm -hmm. to know them. Yeah. I really like that we brought the staff into that 
you know, quite a bit because that, that's very positive. So I like that. Thank you. Any other reports or updates? I guess I could give a, a brief update. I was at the Scotch Plains Affordable Housing Advisory Committee meeting last night, and the group continues to work on um, both how to impact ongoing legislation about affordable housing as well as how to educate the the uh, public and get the um, uh, info to the to the public that the uh, committee thinks would be helpful so that's ongoing we uh, the the uh, group did choose four four bills currently um, in in uh, Trenton that um, th we may be choosing to highlight and send out to the public. Um, when I have those and when it's written up, I will let everybody know, but um, a lot going on there. So I'll keep everybody update, updated when I get more info. Thank you for attending, Dr. Clancy. I appreciate that. Okay, if there's no more reports, then we'll move on to letter to the board. Email dated May 2nd, 2019 from Donna Sacola, Esquire of Tompkins, McGuire, Wachenfeld, and Barry, Attorneys at Law, regarding the updating of the New Jersey Department of Education self-assessment for determining grades under the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights District and Schools Grade Report. Dr. Hayes has responded. Superintendent's Report, Dr. Hayes. Thank you. Um, we have at this point in time, I think on the additions to the agenda, there were uh, there some additions relative to the out of district placements. Yes. Yes. Um, one yes. to the extended school year. Right. But didn't did we have? Uh, that one is actually already approved. That's already approved? All right, good. So we have none at this time. Um, and 2S, we did not have any harassment, intimidation, and bullying reports because we didn't have anything reported at our last meeting. Um, we will have one upcoming for the next meeting that was reported in exec this evening. So 3S, we're asking for approval of the extended school year placements, public and private, as they are listed on the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Any question or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, for us at our next meeting, um, I, no, actually at tonight's meeting, that should be asterisked. I would like you to approve the following field trips. Um, the Black Student Union field trip was approved for the students to go to Summit High School. By the last minute change, we need to change their location to Central High School in Newark. And for the second one, the select choir at the high school uh, that consists of 9th through 12th graders is going to travel to the Crescent Avenue Presbyterian Church in Plainfield on May 10th and 11th. They're going to perform two major choral works with a semi-professional ensemble and a professional brass group. So I would like those approvals this evening. Thank you. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? I just have one quick question. Any question? The select choir is going to be multiple buses, I guess, and not just a district. Like buses? Um, 63, I don't 60, think 63 are going to fit on one. 63 students will need to travel at least on two buses. Just want to make sure <laughs> we're... <laughs> yes. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. At our next meeting, uh, as reported from the curriculum committee, we will be asking for approval of the curriculum matrix for 2019-2020. For and tonight I would ask that the board approve uh, for our Creative Summer Workshops 2019 that Justin Fiore, the school one principal, be appointed to be the administrator for that program. So moved. Second. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Any abstaining? Motion carries. And then at our next meeting, we'll approve the comprehensive equity plan. And moving on to the personnel agenda, I would ask that the board approve the personnel agenda as reviewed in exec this evening. So moved. Second. Second. Any question or discussion? <laughs> Mrs. Saradaki, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Winkler? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mrs. Bauer? Yes. Mrs. Brody? Dr. Clancy? Yes. Mrs. Suriani? Yes. Dr. Kulikowski? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. At this time, we'll move on to the business functions. Mrs. Saradaki? I'd like to review the ones first that I would like a vote on this evening, if that's okay. Sure is. Thank you. Okay. One BUS, I'd like uh, the board to approve the superintendent's recommendations for staff training reimbursement on the May 9, 2019 report. Then on um, 8 BUS, I would like the annual approval to acquire services and purchase supplies for 2019-20, where the Board of Education authorizes the business administrator to advertise for bids, request for proposals, and competitive contracting, utilizing a state contractor, purchasing co-op, et cetera, for the 2019-20 school year, since that process is set to start. Um, and then 14 BUS, uh, the acceptance of the Gov deal funds um, for the sale of uh, 2003 International Bus, 2004 Bluebird Bus, a 2004 Toro 4100D mower, 2004 Sand Pro, uh, 2004 2 uh, one 2004 Toro 345 uh, and a 2001 Toro model 345. And the total sale less the percent that goes to Gov Deals is $7,384.29. And 17 BUS, uh, vendor for the high school spring play. Um, due to the leave of absence of the co one of the co-directors, we're taking portion of the co-directors' uh, stipend and asking to have it allocated to the director since the director did uh, have to do extra work for the play. 18 BUS, the boiler installation at Park Middle School. Uh, we'd like to go ahead and start getting this ordered so that the work can be completed this summer um, and ask the board to approve installation of two boilers at Park Middle School by Kaylin Heating and Air Conditioning under the Ed Data Co-op number nine, bid number 9177. The cost of the project would be $236,935 and funds will be withdrawn from 2017-18 Excess Extraordinary Aid. Um, hopefully by the end of the month, I'll also have uh, quotes for the asbestos removal that's involved with this boiler. And so I'll be asking for your approval at that time for that. But right now I just have the boiler installation. 19 BUS for the culinary arts classroom renovation. I'd like the board to approve schematic designs by EI Associates at, in the amount, uh, the cost of the Schematic designs are 16000 and that includes submission to the DOE as well as the, what they'll do is prepare several designs and bring those to us for approval of which design. We'll work with the staff involved to determine which design, and then they'll be able to come up with the cost from that point. And I believe that's it. Uh, 22 BUS. We received a payment of $500 incentive award for the Scotch Plains Fanwood High School participation of, in the 2019 New Jersey Student Health Survey. And based on the number of participants, the check was 500. So I'd like the board to accept that. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. Any questions or discussion on the items Mrs. Saradecki would like to move? I have a question. Ms. Brody. Debbie, the things that you sell, do they come pick this stuff up? Yes. Okay. 
you don't have to arrange transportation. No, they make payment to Gov Deals, and then the vendor, con the person who's purchasing, comes and actually picks it up, sells a si signs a sales certificate that they've made the purchase, and uh, then once that's completed, Gov Deals sends us the net amount of the purchase. Oops. Mr. Bell, the health survey, is that something that we learn anything from the statewide results? Um, the students submit it anonymously, so we do get right. statewide mm -hmm. result, results, um, but not obviously to our, to our school. Right, yeah. but just in general. Yeah. It helps support statewide tracking of trends in terms of um, health habits and, and not so healthy habits that mm -hmm. high school students may engage in. Okay. Any other question? I just wanted to make a comment again that 14 BUS, the um, sale of the items that again are facilities and maintenance, um, you know, folks keep things going as long as they can. These are 15 to 18 years old. And how old are the, are the boilers? <clears throat> oh. uh, at, at Park Middle? Probably right. 40 years, I think. Yeah, so we really have wonderful, skilled technicians on, on Closer our to staff. 50, maybe. Closer to 50, okay. Um, just to highlight the work that they do, because that's amazing. Yeah, Most play, often, yeah. they're, some of these are bought just for the parts. Yeah. So. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? So we had a motion. We had a second. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I can review the other items. Um, to BUS, I'll be asking for the board to acknowledge receipt of um, the various disbursement listings for the month of April 2019. Uh, three BUS, I'll ask the board to acknowledge receipt of the district school security and fire drill reports for the month of April 2019. Uh, four BUS, if we have any at that time, it will be related service vendors. 5 BUS will be a contract renewal with Strauss SMA Associates for 2000, I should say 1920. Uh, 6 BUS will be a contract renewal with Power Schools Consultation Services, which is RAS Technology Consultants. Um, they uh, help with uh, many of the reports and uh, training that we need and that will be for the 2019-20 school year at a cost of 13000 There's no increase in that fee. 7 BUS will be the designation of official depositories for the 2019-20 school year, which there is no change. 9 BUS will be the award for food service. Uh, every five years we're required to go out for um, a food service management company. Um, and these were provided to, uh, the, the specifications were provided to various food service companies, and we have to wait and see what they provide to us. Um, 10 BUS will be the bid award for athletic equipment reconditioning for the 2019-20 school year. 11 BUS will be the bid award for the Park Masonry Restoration Project. What the split that's been decided is that we're going to try to do the masonry restoration on the newer parts of Park Middle School this summer. And then once it's all worked through as to how they would replace the lentils above the windows in the building, um, and that will require some engineering. Um, then we'll go out for that for next summer because, and also the masonry restoration on the older part of the building because that will be, um, they're hoping not to have to remove all the brick up to the, on the parapet. Um, they're hoping to just be able to uh, support the brick somehow and remove the metal and reinsert metal. Um, so that's going to take some work on that part. 
12 BUS it will be the bid award for custodial supplies for 2019-20, and 13 BUS will be the bid award for electrical supplies for 2019-20. 15 BUS will be the um, acknowledgement of receipt of the board secretary report, treasurer of school fund report, and budget adjustments for April 2019. 16 BUS will be approval of the bill list. And 18, 20 BUS, uh, I'll be asking the board to approve installation of three HVAC units, one all in multi-purpose rooms, one in Brunner, one in Coles, and one in Evergreen. Um, this will have make all of our elementary schools have their multi-purpose room be air-conditioned. Funds will be withdrawn from the 2017-18 Excess Extraordinary Aid for this project. 21 BUS. Did you need this approved tonight? Um, I think you can wait. Okay. Um, Actually, it would be good if we could because then we can get it back to um, Essex County. Okay. Then I'm going to ask the board tonight to approve 21 BUS. Um, this is um, Essex County uh, Educational Services. Educational Services does um, right. gathers data from various districts and is putting in for a grant for the McKinney Vento Education of Homeless Children and Youth Project for 2019-20. And um, they're just asking us to verify that we would collaborate with them on providing information. And they, in turn, provide technical services to us in this area. So we become part of their consortia. And do we have a motion for that one? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion or questions for 21 BUS? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Saradaki. At this time, board policies. Uh, Mrs. Winkler? I'd like to move uh, at our next meeting, no? Not this mm -hmm. meeting. At the next meeting, I will move that the board approve second and final reading. Uh, for adoption of the following board policies, policy 5330.04, administering an opioid antidote policy or, and the regulation that goes with that, bylaw 0132, executive authority, bylaw 0141, board member number and term, Bylaw 0143, board member election and appointment. Bylaw 0151, organization meeting. And bylaw 0153, annual appointments. And policy will be meeting on May 16th. So we anticipate having some additional policies for first reading on May 30th and second reading in June. In June. Thank you, Dr. Hayes. Thank you, Mrs. Winkler. Does anybody have any questions at this time? Okay, we'll look forward to seeing those on May 30th. Okay, any new board business? No new board business. We move on to other board business. Any requests to attend workshops? Any workshop reports? Give a report from the meeting last night. Uh, Several of us attended the Union County School Boards Association uh, meeting last night. Um, it started with, uh, where are we here? Christy Tai was talking about a new social and emotional learning group that she is part of um, and the need to focus on student needs and student voice. Uh, there was a performance by some students from the Plainfield Academy for the Arts and Advanced Sciences uh, re relative to Black History Month and the Me Too movement, which was really powerful performance. Um, there was a presentation by a, um, by a I don't know what her position is, like a school counselor, I guess. She's the Substance Awareness Coordinator, I believe. Is that her Park. position? Okay. Um, her name is Alicia DiLorenzo. She's from the Asbury Park District. 
Uh, she talked about cultivating a culture of wellness in schools. Um, she talked about the, she started with a statement, I believe she attributed it maybe to the Zulu tribe, a statement that was, I see you, I am here. I see you without judgments and I am here bearing witness. Um, she talked about how screen time, increasing amounts of screen time is increasing anxiety and depression among uh, adolescents. And um, she said seven out of 10, 13 to 17 year olds are struggling with anxiety and depression and that disconnection drives addiction and other unwanted uh, behaviors. One in five will be diagnosed from the uh, diagnostic manual uh, by the time they are 18 years old. Uh, she said that kids today uh, only know a world with terrorism, high stakes tests, and school shootings, and that uh, things like this count as what she referred to as adverse childhood experiences or ACEs, and she talked about um, experiences of trauma uh, cause increased health risk um, that can shorten lifespans and have and cause physical uh, ailments uh, and have effects on how we relate to each other. That uh, kids who have experienced these sort of traumas um, are looking for safety and are constantly in a fight or flight mode. Um, Often, uh, she referred to it as toxic stress, which could lead to wear and tear on the body and the mind. Um, that these, these sort of effects are reduced with connection and building of relationships, uh, that people need to have someone who, who makes them feel that they are valued and trusted and loved, um, believing that they matter and that questions shouldn't be what's wrong with you, but what's happened to you. Uh, that's creating these sort of behavior, unwanted behaviors. Um, she talked about social emotional learning competencies. Um, what else? If you aren't taught these things at home, then you're at a disadvantage. Uh, she talked about using mindfulness to bring uh, things around to to get students focused to out of that fight or flight mentality and into the classroom and present in the moment so that learning can happen more effectively. Um, talked about paying attention on purpose and without judgment, leading to increased focus, more engaged uh, students, more aware of the environment around them and increased self-compassion, self, uh, increased empathy, increased cognitive functioning, she referred to neuroplasticity and how we can change our habits and that will change our brains, actually physically rewiring, change our yeah. brains. Yeah, rewiring. Um, she talked about building social emotional learning into policies for school districts. Uh, I guess that that's about what I, that, that's about the end of my notes on her on her presentation, but it was it was a powerful presentation. Uh, then we had an uh, awards ceremony, uh, awards they gave for uh, different levels of, uh, to be, for completing a new board member program or a certified board member program. There were milestone awards that were given out. Karen and I each received our tenures awards for the serving pins. on the you board. Got pins. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Sorry, <laughs> um, there were also 15 and 20 year awards given out. Uh, and that that about that concludes my it, yeah. it was a very nice meeting and I thank everybody who took the time to come to be with us at that meeting the other night, you know, Dr. Hayes was there, uh, Mr. Murray was there, Dr. Clancy made it after her other meeting, Mrs. Brody, Mrs. Williams, and certainly Amy and I and, and Dr. Hayes were there, and it was just a good meeting. It was very interesting. It's well attended, and um, we got to, to meet a lot of nice uh, people and topics, and we spent some time together for Union County School Board Association. Thanks for your report. Yeah, thank you. Any other reports? Okay. Um, buses for project graduation at our next meeting. We'll be approving that. 
At this time, we will also have approval of the minutes at our next meeting for April 11th. Uh, executive session for the open agenda media meeting and the public portion as well as April 25th regular meeting and its executive portion and then in accordance with 90 uh, excuse me oh in accordance with Scotch Plains Fanwood Public School Bylaws 10164 and 0165 the meeting will be open for 15 minutes for public comment Maximum two minutes per speaker. Speakers addressing the superintendent items, business functions, and other board business will be heard first. If time remains, speakers may address other matters. When you approach the podium, please state your name and the town in which you reside. And that's <laughs> no other letters. I was going to say you were going to say something nice about Mr. Murray. <laughs> okay, seeing no one. <laughs> Remarks for the good of the order. <laughs> well, we had the district art show. That's why I was just going to say Wednesday. it was wonderful. And we have a little bit of it here. Thank you for whoever brought it over Barbara for Prestridge. us. There's beautiful artwork in the back and then all around us. But the uh, the old gym was just jam-packed with everything from floor to ceiling. And it was absolutely wonderful. And I wish everybody could see that tree in the back of the room with all the birds on it. If you can swing around and show that. <laughs> that was my favorite piece out of the whole thing. I just think that was fantastic. Well, I was just going to say uh, the same thing. And it was also wonderful because there were... Uh, Obviously, students were all were there with their parents, but there were also students there demonstrating um, and doing things for younger kids, which I thought was great. So there were ways to be actively involved, and um, I know we were. Everybody was reading and looking at the things here, and these pens, um, you know, based on Madeline Albright that they did that was this is another just great example if you read what the students came up with based on sort of telling a story based on those so read our pens yes anyone else so. I have some things. So first, we want to congratulate McGinn School because they have, again, received a Union County Kids Dig In grant for 2019. So wow. they'll be expanding their work in the garden. Um, and we want to give a shout out to sophomore Ryan Eng. Ryan participated in our DECA national competition down in Orlando, Florida. And in the area of financial consulting, um, from over 250 students across the United States and Canada. He is recognized for having one of the top five test scores in the category. Wow. wow. So look to the future if you need a financial advisor. <laughs> <laughs> Someone to keep in mind. Um, our Moonglowers um, last week took the um, Division II state finals. They, again, are the state champions in Division Two of the New Jersey um, the Jazz Teachers Group that sponsor that competition. Mm -hmm. So we'll be recognizing them at our upcoming student recognition. Um, and then not to be outdone, this was, I don't know if any of you caught it, um, but Terrell Middle School, last Monday night on CBS News, there was a short yes, piece at the it. end of the 5 o'clock news. Um, they have three students that participate in um, Little League. I was going to bring that up. You were going to bring that up? Yeah, go ahead. Go no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. No. No, 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 go ahead. It was um, an amazing display of sportsmanship. Um, one of the students, Ben Fay, um, is a student that has Down syndrome. And uh, he got up to be at, at bat, and he hit the ball, and the ball was thrown back so that um, the, the pitcher, right, caught the, the catcher. The catcher threw it over the first base, oh, way over the first baseman's wait. head, so he can run around the uh, bases to get a home run. And all of the students on both teams congratulated and for, and and just shared in his joy of having Wonderful. his first home run. So the beautiful part about this was uh, this was captured on Facebook. One of the few times Facebook can be positive. Yes. <laughs> and um, 
CBS News picked up the story and they asked if they could come to Terrell to interview the students. So they interviewed Ben, Evan. Evan is the young man who threw the ball out. And then um, Ben's brother, Dylan. And they got to talk about how important this was and why they were happy to share in this occasion for, the, for um, Ben. Um, I, Kevin Holloway called me and said, it's going to be on television. And I, I said, I'm never home. Yeah. So I called my husband and I said, you have to tape it. Mm -hmm. So I was able to watch it. And it was just the, the, the sharing from those boys in terms of how happy they were to provide this opportunity and celebrate this young man's achievement was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. So sometimes Dr. you Hollow can get that. It, you can go back online. and No, but I meant you could put that link on um the website. So oh, that's great. I don't yeah. have the news. I have it through a visa. But I meant you can, a lot of times from ABM them, too? a lot of times from them you can get it. We'll look to see if we can. So that would be great. I was going to so say, Dr. Serious. Holloway does a lot of work at Terrell about kindness. Yes. Um, it's kind of the Terrell mantra, so it's nice to see that in action. Yes. Um, and last but not least, um, she's very, very shy about these things, but I want to give a shout out to Nancy because Nancy is going to be recognized by her college as her College of Education's nominee for the pa Patterson Alliance 2019 Extra Mile Award. That will be <laughs> coming up tomorrow. So congratulations, Nancy. Thank you. Do you want to share anything about this? <laughs> I don't think she wanted you to share anything no, about I, this. I, I, I think, um, you know, have been very committed. We all have and at the college, I would say, to Patterson. And um, so it's it's nice. I feel, I feel like it's a, a team recognition. So, Well, we're very proud of you as well. <laughs> Thank you. I, I did want to mention, as far as Terrell, that the folks, uh, the uh, young people who presented, were runners up in their first time out at History Day uh, for the national contest. So uh, they almost made it, and I think that's very impressive for the first time that they even competed. So, yes, it's all good. Thanks for sharing that. I was wondering what happened with their group, if yeah. how they did. Mm -hmm. Wow. And also today was PTA Council Past President's Day, and Dr. Hayes and I and Debbie uh, were there for the meeting where they annually read through all the PTA Council presidents over the years from, was it 1957, I think, or 54? 54. And they just go through the names, and Debbie and I are also past presidents, and then um, after the annual meeting, then we had a very nice luncheon with some of those past presidents who were able to be with us. So it's nice to share all of our memories from PTA Council that we've worked so hard and so long throughout the years in the district. So it was very nice to see all of the former presidents today. A special day. It is very special every year. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. I'd just like to let the board know that this afternoon the high school varsity golf team won the county championship. Fantastic. Oh. oh. You should come to the microphone, on, Chris. Turn, Turn the TV <laughs> on the microphone and come and tell us. <laughs> Do it right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'd just like to let the board know that this afternoon the varsity high school golf team won the county championship in Echo Lake Country Club in Westfield today. And my twin brother, Jimmy Bagdonis, was the back to back individual county champion. So, just a little shout out to the golf team. Wow. That's great. Congratulations. Oh, wonderful. Right. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. And did I read that the volleyball. I yes, did, yes. Uh, volleyball, yes. They yeah. also the the boys volleyball all county champs are, are also second year second time yeah wow. yes excellent so we'll have more to celebrate <laughs> <laughs> this is game <laughs> yes. thank you well those are all very great things glad you brought that forward for us okay does nobody else having anything else we'll just remind you of the upcoming meetings May 29th is our retiree staff recognition at Evergreen at 3.30.
Thursday, May 30th is our next regular public meeting. And Monday, June 10th is student recognition at Evergreen School. Note this is a date change. And then our last two board meetings, June 13th, open agenda meeting, and June 27th, regular public meeting here at the admin office. At this time, then, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Any question or discussion? I didn't think so. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. There will be no no's or abstentions. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.